So who do we have on the live? Y'all check in so I can see y'all name. I want to see who it is. Y'all know I'm no. Let me know who it is. And can y'all see me? Oh, there was somebody. Oh, hey, Miss Fan. <laughs> okay, it's eight o'clock. Let's get started. Let me cut this down. I can do stuff like this now because the kids are gone for a uh, spring break. I can do this. I really be wanting to do it all the time, but woo, I can't. So anyway, um, I want y'all to know that we are going to have a uh, conversation. We are going to have a conversation. So I want y'all. Hey, Tara. Hey, Kim. Y'all doing okay tonight? Y'all stay up because it won't take long. It's just going to take like 30 minutes because y'all know it's close to my bedtime too. But um, I wanted to do this um, this topic, the topics that I'm going to put in my next book. But um, I really wanted to touch, you know, put it out there and see what kind of feedback I get. This is going to help me launch my online course that's going to be coming out this month. Uh, my online, online course is going to be Mind Over Matter. Mind Over Matter Scholar course. So this is um, going to be some of the information that we are going to uh, touch on tonight. We're going to have a conversation and a dialogue. So y'all shoot me feedback. Um, you know, when when you have something to say, interject and don't let it just be me talking. Y'all interject and send your uh, messages and your comments and your questions so that we can have a dialogue and a conversation. OK, so anyway, let's just get right to it. Get into the core of the matter. I am I'm very clear about what my purpose here is on this earth. And I know that my objective is to help save every person of African descent. I want to help help that person be, you know, wear their crown. And um, I've always had a big mouth all my life. My sister knows that. Where she at? Oh, there she is. My sister knows that I've always had a big mouth all my life. and um, you know, I remember as a little child, I, I used to correct my daddy English and one when he would speak poor grammar. And one time we were at my brother's wedding and he said something that wasn't grammatically correct. And I was like maybe nine or 10. And I corrected him like in front of everybody. And he didn't say anything at the wedding. But when we got home, he was like, you just think you know everything. And you got such a big mouth and you just talk all the time. So uh, you remember that, sister? <laughs> I really got in trouble way more than that because I, I think he said he wanted to give me a whooping for correcting his grammar in front of everybody. But anyway, um, I've always been that way. I've always been a truthful and honest person. I've always wanted to see people do their very best. It used to bother me when people were like, you're a know-it-all, but it doesn't bother me anymore. So I, I want to get share the information that comes to me. I want to share with other people and help make them better. So one thing, everything that I'm going to talk about tonight, this is just a thought that I want to put on you all's mind. And it's something that I want you guys to to share with or put thought into our research um, with somebody else. That's what I want you to do. You know, don't take what I'm saying for fact. Don't take it as the gospel. I want I want to I want to trigger your thought process. I want to trigger your thinking and I want to make you think. That's really, really, really what I want to do. I want to make you think about some things. Um, so let's talk about matter. What is the matter? So, you know, sometimes you ask a child that or you ask yourself that question. What is the matter? What is wrong? Because at the end of the day, we all have problems and issues and things that affect us at some time or another. And you always somebody will all, if they see something's wrong with you, they will ask you, well, what's the matter? And sometimes you may know the answer to that question, and sometimes you may not. Hello, secure program. Hey, girl. So sometimes you may know the answer to that question, and sometimes you may not. But I want to give you a different way of thinking about that question. What is 
the matter. I want to give you a different way of thinking about it and a different way of processing because this is something I want you all to think about. Every situation or every obstacle that you face, you face that situation because of yourself. So like whatever situation you're in, if it's something that you're dealing with that you don't like, at the end of the day, when you boil it all down, it's a situation that you put yourself in at the end of the day. So think about that. Um, so what is the matter? So let's talk about matter. Let's define matter. So matter is an object, right? An object that has protons, neutrons, electrons. It's not going to be a science lecture, but an atom is an object. And we are matter. We are matter. The human body is matter. It, it takes up space and it has weight and it can be uh, it's in the form of a solid. Or it can be in the form of a liquid if you think about blood. So we are matter. We make up matter. So the body essentially, let's think about our body. It is essentially no different than any other living thing like a tree or a flower. So our body is kind of like a universe inside of a universe. So what does that mean? That means that everything that God, the all created, everything that he created is a universe within itself. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Everything that he created is a universe within itself because think about the universe, the overall universe, like the galaxy, the solar system. That's a universe and it consists of matter. Then when you boil it down to the earth, the planet that we live on, it's a universe. The planet we live on is a universe that consists of matter. And then if you boil it down to us, the human body, we're a universe because we're matter. So there's a deeper, really, really deeper complex to that, uh, to that theory. And it's called the five element theory. But y'all are going to have to sign up for my class in a couple of weeks to get that theory and to learn what that means. because. Um, there are parts in the body that represent a true universe that correspond to a true universe like the earth, um, liquid, air, all of those things. So we are matter at the end of the day. And we are a universe within a universe. Don't y'all get excited to know that? I know I get excited. Somebody need to say, I'm excited. Type it in there real fast. <laughs> We are a universe in a universe. So it's important for us to put the human body in perspective. That's the whole purpose of what I wanted to have this, this live tonight. We need to put the, the human body into perspective. The human body is a living matter that's no different, essentially, than a flower or grass. Because, you know, we need oxygen. We need energy to sustain ourselves. So the true essence of what you really have to focus on if you want to get to what is the matter, you've got to separate that human body from that spiritual force inside of you. To become the true essence of who you are, you have to lose this body that is no different than a tree, essentially. Lose this body and connect with your spirit. And that's really easy to do when you put it in perspective of what the body is, which, like I just told y'all, the body is matter. <laughs> so what is the matter? That's it. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Tara, for saying you are excited. I appreciate that. <laughs> so you have to put it in perspective. So if you want to get to the core if you guys saw the, the apple that I was sitting in on the flyer, if you want to get to the core of the matter, the core of the matter is the spirit inside the body. The matter is the body and the core is the spirit. So what is this all about? This is all about me giving you three steps, which there's more than these. These are just three that I've, I've used that have helped me. Three steps that you can use to get to that core. And the core is the what? Somebody type the answer. This is your question. What's the core? Y'all gonna get a zero. 
on y'all test. The core is the spirit and the matter is the body. Okay, so, but even though I'm telling you that the body is not like really, really, really that important. Thank, thank you, uh, Miss Fan, spiritual self. That's right. That's the core. So even though I'm saying the body is not that important because it's like no different than any other living thing. But what sets the human being apart, what makes us truly different and truly a miracle is the fact that we have something called the spirit. This body houses a spirit. Now, I haven't seen any scientific evidence to suggest that a tree houses a spirit. Uh, if y'all have did any research and discovered that a tree houses spirit, please send that to me so I can read it because y'all know I like to read and do my research. So the body is no different than any other living thing. But what sets us apart as a human being is the fact that we have a spirit. So we have to disconnect from the matter part of us and connect to the spirit part of us. OK, so why is now what we talked about, why it's important. So let's talk about how to do that. OK, the first thing that you want to do to clear the body is start practicing deep breathing and meditation. Did y'all write that down? Y'all taking notes. See, Tara, she was like, Tara's going to get 100, 100, the spirit. So um, the first thing, deep breathing and meditation. Now I'm going to tell you why each of those things are important when you want to connect to the spirit. Okay. And why is connecting to the spirit even important anyway? Okay. Why? Nobody teaches us this. Nobody teaches us this. It's very good to have religion and have religious practices and go to church, but no one really teaches us how to actively become a communicator with the spirit that is inside of us. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, some of y'all spirits inside of y'all are bored to death. The spirit is in there talking to itself, talking about she don't never let me do nothing. She don't never let me go nowhere. She don't never talk to me. Oh, Lord, I'm so bored. I'm so ready to get out of this body. When I'm going to be able to get out of this body? I'm telling y'all, that's what some of y'all spirit is saying. Because y'all treating that spirit like it don't exist. You will feed the human body, but you won't even take a minute to communicate and connect to who you are as a spiritual being. And your spirit is bored. And I'm going to give you a hint. Now, this is going to be in my book, but this is a hint. This is a hint how to know if your spirit is bored. Let me tell you, if you are dreaming that you run around chasing chickens with a uh, with an orange hunting jacket on, <laughs> your spirit is bored. Your spirit, your spirit is bored. If you're running around in your dream after a chicken and you got on an orange hunting coat and you wake up like, why in the world did I dream that? Because your spirit is bored and it don't have nothing else to do because you're not giving it anything to do. So it's just playing. The dream dreams are really I. anybody who knows me, my sister, anybody who knows me knows I am like a dream analyzer. Like, tell me what you dreamed last night because I'm going to tell you what it means. I am such a dream analyzer. So I believe because one thing, the body needs rest, right? The body has to rest because that's when the body renews itself. But the spirit does not require rest. So when you rest and your spirit is playing, but if you haven't given your spirit anything to fundamentally do, it's just going to play because they don't have nothing else to do. So it's bored. Okay, so that's how you know if you're not working in spirit. Like you need to be working that spirit. Uh, you can tell by your dreams. You can really tell by your dreams because that's when your um that's when your spirit is uh searching for the answers that you've given it. And we're gonna talk. Yeah, stick a pen in that because we're gonna talk about the answers, searching for answers to the question that you're giving it. And then you're probably saying right now, well, what, well, what answer to what question? See what I'm saying? You ain't giving the spirit nothing to do because you ain't even asked the spirit a question. OK, so we're going to come back to that in a minute. So back to the breathing. So why is the breathing and the meditation important? OK, first of all, it's important because of the atomic makeup of the body. In order for the spirit to be flexible and malleable to communicate, you have to get the body in a relaxed state. Now, the body is uh, about 65 percent. The body is about 65 percent oxygen. 
The four main elements that make up the body are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. That's that's what you're made of. That's why I'm telling you, you really know different than any. Because a tree has about the same amount of, um, of elements that we have. So you're made up of 65% oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Y'all taking notes. Y'all write that down. Because you need to know what the body is made of. So oxygen. So how does the body get oxygen? One way the body gets oxygen is through water. Because water is what? Water is, remember, water is H2O. And we're going to do a science class real fast. Water is H2O. So water is two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen. So if you drink water, you're getting two essential elements that you need for your body because the body is high, is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. H2O, that's right. So, um, and another way your body receives oxygen is when you breathe. So when you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. And when you breathe out, you breathe out uh, carbon monoxide. Who, who, isn't it carbon monoxide? Who know? <laughs> Tara, <laughs> you have no oxygen. <laughs> you suffocate right now. <laughs> Girl, you crazy. You crazy. I'm going to bring you some oxygen Monday. I'll bring you some oxygen Monday <laughs> in the form of some H2O. Okay, so when you uh, so when you breathe in, you're breathing in oxygen, and what that oxygen does when you breathe, well, Latoya Jackson, I am glad you, girl, hey girl, hey girl. <laughs> so when you breathe in, you breathe in the oxygen, and that oxygen goes to your brain, to your blood supply, and to your heart. And what it does is, and don't y'all take my word for this, I. Write it down and go and research what I'm saying. Go and research it. Go and look it up. Hey, girl. Research and look it up and, and get these facts for yourself. Don't just take my word, you know, for what I'm saying. I'm just here to give you something to think about. That's all. So when you breathe the oxygen in, it causes your heart rate to slow down and it causes your blood vessels to constrict, which puts you in a relaxed mode when you breathe. So really. There is research, and then again, y'all, like I said, y'all check behind me on this and do your research, but there's research that suggests, you know, that the average person on a daily basis only takes about 10 deep breaths a day. But research also suggests that when people deep breathe, and when I say deep breathe, I mean breathe in and out through the mouth, in through the nose and out through the mouth. So when you breathe in, um, now, what I was going to give y'all was some statistics. It suggests that people only take about 10 deep breaths a day, which is not enough. But research also suggests that people who deep breathe can lower their blood pressure by deep breathing, having a deep breathing routine all day long. So, you know, every couple of hours, that's when you take them in and say, oh, it's time for me to deep breathe. And you do about a series of three breaths of deep breathing. And it brings in all this oxygen to your body because that's what the body needs. The body is a carbon based oxygen based form of matter and it needs um oxygen and so now what does meditation do so when you begin to do your deep breathing and go into meditation meditation silences the mind and not the brain now another another uh science i mean not science question another pop quiz so did we have we not learned that uh have we not learned so true about deep breathing? Yes, it really does work, Kim. So have we not learned that there is a difference between the what, y'all? The mind and the brain, right? Everybody nodding their head. <laughs> it's a difference between your mind and your brain, okay? So the brain is uh, just an organ that only responds to commands and the main and the mind is connected to the heart and to the soul and it is processing and sending signals to the brain but we're not going to talk about that today um uh, if you want to get into the mind and the brain study that's going to be on my online class mind over matter okay so anyway tara did you know the answer to that because you were at one of the book signings 
<laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the uh the mind at the mind is quieted when a person begins to meditate. The goal is to completely silence the mind so that the brain is not responding to anything. And when you can silence your mind and then cause the brain to not be able to respond to anything, that is when the spirit wakes up. When you met when you meditate and you're in quietness, you're you're being quiet, your inner self is being quiet, you're not thinking about anything and it's the hardest thing. Like meditation I remember uh, my sister and Latoya and I, we were, this was like probably four years ago. We were like, man, we've got to start doing this meditation thing, y'all. Like everybody says it works. We really got to start doing it. So, you know, we were following Deepak Chopra and we were trying to learn how to uh, do this meditation. And I'm going to tell y'all, I have gotten really good. I can meditate for like 15 minutes. Hey, and that's an accomplishment. And uh, Latoya and my sister knows that's good because when we started this journey a couple of years ago, we were like two minutes in, and oh, it was it's it's hard. It's a hard thing to do to not think about anything. But as hard as it's, as it is, it is the most therapeutic thing and the most helpful and beneficial thing for the body. So um, it really, really does help calm the body. Okay, so the purpose is, see, I tried to make notes so I could stay on task. The purpose is we want to get, we want to in line with the true purpose of the spirit. Because when the spirit disconnected from God or the creator and it came into this fleshly being, it had a purpose to fulfill here. So your spirit has a purpose and it's trying to tell you what the purpose is, but now you just not listening. And but but that's gonna end after tonight, right? So after tonight, y'all are gonna really key in with the spirit and gonna really find out. So um, so the, the spirit and the body has a true purpose and has a charge, but sometimes the body begins to malfunction. Okay, so what causes the body to malfunction? Who I want to know who knows the answer to this. What causes the body to malfunction? I told y'all this is gonna be a dialogue. <coughs> I don't see anybody typing any answers, anyone. <laughs> so what can cause the body to malfunction is one thing is the, the poor food choices. Poor food choices can cause the body to malfunction. Not enough sleep, that can cause the body to malfunction. Um, those are all things that the body needs to rejuvenate itself. Now, I'm, I'm going to try not to get on the soapbox about a healthy diet and healthy eating because that's not the purpose of this call today. But it's going to be very difficult for me because the older I get, I get more and more passionate about the things that I put into my body. Um, your body, I already told you what the body is made of. Oxygen, hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen. And your body responds best. When you, oh yeah, not enough water. That's true. And we just talked about that. Um, but your body is a carbon oxygen based uh, form of matter and it responds best to an alkaline diet. And an alkaline diet is a non starchy diet. Like I said, I'm not going to dig too deep into that, but just know that when you go against the grain and start putting non alkaline foods, and I want y'all to look that up. I want you to look up alkaline foods, you know, after you get off the call and say, you know, I don't know what she's talking about. Let me, I want you to go and look it up. The non-alkaline foods, they cause the body to become just unwired. It messes with the nucleus and cells of the body and cause it to come unwired. Because really, just think about this. Nothing that God creates is designed to die. Not really, because think about how old the sun is and it was created by God. And think about a tree. There are trees still in my daddy's yard from when I was a little girl. So those trees are 40, 50 years old. That tree still looks the same. Things that God create are really not designed to die. And if you're a biblical, if you're a biblical person. Think about people from the Bible. Methuselah lived over 800 years. We were not designed to, to die at 50 and 60 years old. I'm telling y'all. But what has happened is 
we have become contaminated. Our DNA has become contaminated with um, with people messing with the food. Because long ago, people only ate the food that came from the earth. That's the only thing they ate. Foods that came from the earth that were nutritious for the body that allowed the brain, the heart, and the lungs to function properly. And what has happened now, we have genetically modified food. And um, that's right. We were, we were not designed to die. So we have genetically modified food that our body is, because think about it. Genetically modified food. So this food, somewhere somewhere in a lab, someone is taking food germicides. And if you get a chance, just research how people build food. They go into a lab and they germinate these foods together and build food. And they become starch-based. <laughs> so he said, you sound just like the mom. She used to tell me this. Thank you, girl. Uh, and they become these starch-based foods. Well, everybody knows starches are not good for us. Everybody knows that starches are not good for the body. But yet and still in these labs, they use starch as a binder to bind these foods together. And we consume the starch. And, and our body doesn't even know what to do with a starch substance. It doesn't even know what to do. So then you start getting all these diseases. You start aging and, and we and you start and we start dying. And so next thing you know, they got an average age for how old a person should be. There was no such thing as a person having an average, an average lifespan of 5,000 years ago. There's no such thing as a lifespan. Now, in my personal opinion, and y'all can take this as a grain of salt, in my personal opinion, I think they deliberately did all of these things to the food so that we could die so that um, they wouldn't have to keep taking care of people as they get old. But that is my theory. You know, that's neither here nor there. So just know that. So our body was not designed to die, but we are increasing and, and accelerating our degenerative process by the foods and the lack of nutrients that our body has. Now, the body is so dynamic and so well built that it can sustain on that junk for a very long time. It really can. And so, um, you know, you can you can get you some things, get you some medicine and the body can sustain itself for a while. Not long, but it can because the body is so um, unique in the way that it's made and it can sustain itself. But just know the point I want you all to get. Just know the body was not designed to function that way. The body is only designed to be a tunnel and a channel for communication for the spirit. That's the, that is the reason why the body is in function and in creation. It simply houses the spirit. And in order to house that spirit, it has to be the most highly functioning and well functioning that it can. So that's the purpose of that. So um, does anybody want to interject? Because um, I have two more things. I told you I wasn't going to keep y'all too long. It's been 28 minutes. <clears throat> so no, so y'all will keep those things in mind. We have to obey the laws of nature. And then just think about other animals. You don't have, when you go into a zoo, one of my favorite animals to watch in the zoo is a gorilla. And don't y'all laugh. I just love the gorilla. He is so intelligent and he is so gentle at the same time. And the gorilla does not eat meat. Isn't that amazing? The, um, and the like the panda bear, they eat uh, bamboo and they are like so smart and just and you watch them and how they take care of their young. It is just so sweet. But if you think about it, those panda bears and those gorillas are not eating the food that the alligator eats. Do you go into a zoo and you see the alligator man? leave the alligator thing and go over and feed the bear what he fed the alligator? No, because they don't consume the same foods. And we are no different. These genetically modified foods were not intended, intended to be consumed by people of African descent. We were not designed that way. 65,000 years ago, our ancestors never had diseases. And y'all can research that. 65,000 years ago, there was no such thing as disease. African tribes did not have doctors that had been to medical school. And those people lived 
to be 120, 200 years old, our people. So we, we were not designed to function in the way that um, the colonization has forced us to function. So you keep that in mind. Okay, so that is about the deep breathing meditation. That's the first thing you have to do. And I'm going to get off of that soapbox. Moving on to the next thing, number two. Number two, you got to ask the universe a question. I briefly touched on this earlier. If you want to connect with your spirit, ask your spirit a question. Talk to her. She is listening to you. And I distinctly remember the very first time the spirit communicated back to me. I was laying in bed and I had been asking a very particular question to the to my spirit, to God, a very specific question. And every night, every morning, I would ask this question, ask this question. Thank you, Tara. This is way interesting. Thank you. And I asked this question and asked this question and asked this question. I would never forget. I was laying in the bed. This is when I was staying with my mom. When my dad was sick and I was laying in bed and you know how you're in between that phase of sleep and awake. You like just in between you, you about to doze off, but you still kind of awake. And the answer came to me in my right ear. And it was speaking kind of like in a foreign tongue, maybe kind of like a um, they had like a. a an African something dialect. I'm never going to forget it. And it spoke to me in this ear and answered my question. So when I tell you, I'm not talking something that I have made up. This stuff I, I'm telling you about, it's not anything I made. It's everything. It's something that I have experienced. When you give the spirit something to do, something to work on, and 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 because the spirit don't be running around. It don't want to run around and chase chickens in your dream. It wants to answer your questions. Because there are laws in place that govern this universe. Like y'all know the law of gravity, right? You drop something, it's going to fall to the ground. There are laws that govern this universe. And one of the laws that govern this universe, again, that nobody is teaching is the power of our thought, the power of the mind. When we ask a question, the universe has to answer that question. And the reason why is because of the spirit that is inside of us is just that powerful. When you ask a question, I don't care what the question is. The question is now you got to be you know, specific. Like don't ask, you know, don't play with your spirit because it's a real thing. You know, don't ask questions like, okay, why am I here? Okay, that's a little too vague. You need to be very specific with your petitions and with your questions because this is a serious thing you know be very very specific with your question that you're asking but i tell you this you're not going to get the answer when you want the answer when you expect the answer you may not get it in a day you may not get it in a week but there's a reason for that because you got to have discipline and you've got to be you've got to be open you got to be open and the spirit has to trust you with the information that it's going to give you back. But just know in question that you ask starts producing a vibration. So this is how powerful your mind is. And again, we're not talking about the brain, y'all, because the brain and the mind are different. But this is how powerful your mind is. Any question that you ask in your mind. And I'm pointing to my heart because that is the center of your mind. Any question that you ask produces a vibration. OK, this universe is governed off of vibrations. Because once again, if you're biblical and if you're not a biblical person, I don't intend to offend. But if you are biblical, think about in Genesis when it said, you know, God spoke everything into existence. Have you ever took a minute to think about why that is so? Or how was he able to do that? How was the creator able to speak something into existence? And the answer is because of vibration. It is a law. And I'm going to tell you this. You have the same power. Because the same person that spoke the sun into orbit, a piece of him is in you. And you have the same power. So you got to start asking questions and the universe is going to respond. But I'm going to tell you what's going to come with that response. It's going to come a responsibility. 
like me, like, you know, I really just don't want to be just the one telling all this stuff. Like people gonna think I'm crazy, but I have to because that's my calling. That's my purpose. And I have to do it. I am compelled to do it. I have to do it. So, and that's going to be the same thing with you. When you start asking those questions, are y'all still with me? Yeah, everybody still, y'all still with me? When you start asking those questions and you start getting those answers, you're going to have to be responsible. And you and boy, your work is going to start. Your work is going to start. So you remember what I said earlier. If you're not asking any questions, you're not giving your spirit anything to do. Your spirit is in you, bored to death and, and telling God, like, God, I, you know, you don't put me inside this woman's body and she just ain't doing nothing. And I, <laughs> and I just, I don't have, and, he, and I'm telling you, the spirit is telling God this. He is saying, she just don't give me anything to do. And she just doesn't talk to me. And all she do is just talk, just be on that Instagram. And she just ain't giving me nothing to do. That is what your spirit is saying. Y'all think I'm kidding. But it really is because the spirit in you is a true thing. It's a true force. And it's your job as a human being on this earth. It is your job to connect to that spirit and, and fulfill your purpose on this earth. That's your job. And I'm going to give you a charge to do that today. So the last thing that you need to do to connect with your spirit, begin to focus on what brings you peace and seek knowledge. You cannot become a spiritual person and a free person because becoming a spiritual person is becoming a free person. You're free. You don't care about what people say about you anymore. You don't care about judgment. You are free from all of that. And I'm telling you, it, I'm, I'm telling you, it happens like instantly. Like I remember in college, I used to care about people saying, Donna thinks she knows everything. Like that used to bother me. But that don't bother me now. I don't care. You know, I do. I happen to know a lot. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but it's by no, me, no way of my own doing. It's no way of my own doing. It's me seeking, seeking these things and asking these questions. These are questions that I have intentionally asked through the years and received answers to. Very specifically ask these questions like, how was God able to speak and something happened? And the answer, it comes to me, the answers that I ask. So you got to do that. So focus on what brings you peace and seek knowledge. Seeking knowledge and focusing on what brings you peace puts you on the path to wisdom and perseverance. God wants us to become wise. He doesn't want foolish people and he doesn't want childish, out of control people. He wants people who are seeking seeking knowledge because when you seek knowledge, you become a wise person. You will seek solutions to problems and you won't seek problems. Like you will see something that could potentially be a problem and you will immediately start looking for the solution to that problem. So that's what um, a spiritual being is doing. That when you are, when you start seeking peace, you're like grooming yourself. You're grooming yourself for that higher level. You're grooming yourself. So, and that's what it, you know, and that's really what it, uh, that's what it's, all of spirit is naturally it naturally wants peace you know that part of you with the drama because you know we <laughs> hi nicole we can all have drama you know that's the that's the matter that's the flesh of us that like no i know you didn't uh say that i know you did do that. you know that's not the spirit like that's the uh that's that learned person because i will tell you about the brain and then after this i'm gonna let y'all go because it's almost nine o'clock and I don't want anybody falling asleep. <laughs> but let me tell you this about the brain. Okay. And, and maybe we'll do this in another class. Do y'all want another class on this so we can take it to another level? What y'all what y'all think? Think we should do like a part two, take it to the next level? And I could explain the uh, five element theory to y'all. Anyway, y'all just see your message and let me know. We can talk about the five element theory. And the five element theory can help you... Um, Choose your alkaline based diet. <laughs> Tamiko said, Why not say yes? Okay, we'll do a part two to this one maybe next week. And we'll talk about the five elements and um our alkaline diet and how the alkaline diet is based. The alkaline diet is an African based diet from the tribe of Dadot, Dadata, D-A-D-A-U-T-A. 
Don't take my word for it. Do the research yourself. But it's a, a African tribal based diet. And they don't tell you that on Google. So anyway, back to the brain. And then I'm going to say this. And then I'm going to let y'all go. Oh, uh, so let me see how anybody, does anybody else have any, uh, any uh, comments that y'all want? Because I can read them out. Or any questions? Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> so much fun. So, okay. So your brain, I haven't forgot what I was going to say. So your brain, um, the board. Okay. So learned behavior, learned behavior, that part with that attitude, like, uh-uh, I, oh, no child. I know she of her, but I like her sometimes, you know, but, um, uh, that part is a, is a learned, uh, uh, a, a memory is a learned memory that is stored in cells in your brain. So you actually teach yourself uh, behavior. Like, I don't know when, I don't know where, I'm still like trying to research that, but you actually teach yourself, you know, that kind of behavior. And then it becomes a pattern because the brain, not the mind, y'all, but the brain works off of learned behavior and patterns. So the brain reverts to memory. So, you know, if someone, you know, cuts you off while you're driving, your ego, if somebody cuts you off while you're driving and you start uh, cussing that person out, you know, that's a learn, like your brain memorized that from whenever you did it before. And it tells you to do it again. Isn't that interesting? So it has nothing to do with who you are. That response is not who you are. Your spirit is who you are. That is just a learned behavior. And that is just like a reflex. Like if someone hits your that, uh, that nerve in your knee and you know how your leg just pops out. That's how the brain is. Once it learns a behavior, it just does it automatically. And you have to make a conscious effort to unlearn that behavior. So now that is interesting. So any kind of behavior pattern, and I touched on that a little bit in my book, but I just didn't dig all the way deep into it. But you have to really unlearn uh, that pattern. And then I'm going to tell y'all just one more thing because this stuff is just so interesting, okay? Um, but that is also the phenomenon that is connected to the phantom limb syndrome. Y'all know what the phantom limb syndrome is, right? That is like people who've had their leg uh, <laughs> a quick cussing out. Yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, the phantom limb syndrome is where like if, if a person, an amputee has had their limb removed, um, they can still feel that limb even though it's not there. And I'm telling you, I asked the universe. I'm like, okay, so how is this so? And that is the reason because the brain has no, and I'm talking about the brain. So the brain has no distinction between what is and isn't. Okay. The brain has no distinction between what's real and what isn't real. So the brain don't know if your arm really there or not. The brain doesn't know. It's only responding like me moving my hands. The brain don't know that my hands are here or not. It's only responding based off of a learned behavior pattern. And have you, have you ever noticed, I'm just going to leave y'all with this one last thing. Let me share one thing. So have you ever noticed, like, when you talk to people and you know how it, it drives me crazy. But I remember this one man I used to talk to all the time. This is when I worked in a grocery store back in my hometown when I was like 16. And he was the store manager. And every time he talked, he would do this. He would be talking and doing this. You to drive me crazy. Are the cells still communicating if all is energy? Yes, the cells are still communicating. And we talked about that earlier too, but our cells, the membrane on our cells have been destroyed with the acidic diet. Now see, that's a great question. But you know, but our cells are not functioning the way the cells functioned 65,000 years ago. Because y'all know that the African, our African roots trace back 65,000 years. We are old people, aren't we? I know, I, I, I think I, I think my spirit was back there in 65,000 years. But anyway, yeah, he used to rub his nose. Like he would be saying, um, Donna, I need you to wear a Saturday um, at 10 o'clock. Um, do you think you can come in at 10? And I'd be like, if you don't start rubbing your, just ask me the question and start rubbing your nose. But that is a learned behavior pattern. 
and his brain is doing what's memorized. So the brain knows like when he talks or when he says, oh, the brain's like, put your hand to your nose. So it's a learned behavior. So, and that's one thing that we have to do as we become spiritual beings and we start asking these questions, we're gonna, we're gonna have to get these voided learned behaviors. We're gonna have to erase them. And there's a process to, to doing that. It is, there's a process to doing that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, yep, it has become a habit and habits are behaviors. Habit is not just a habit, y'all. Yes, nervous tick. A habit is a behavior. And like smoking cigarettes, people say, oh, it's a habit. It's a behavior. It's a behavior pattern. And, and, it's, and it's actually composed. That behavior is housed in a cell in the brain. So that behavior is like a vibration. Remember, we were just talking about vibrations earlier, about how powerful they are. That, that behavior, that habit has become a vibrational pattern. And anything that creates a vibration, the universe responds to it. So that's why you have like phantom limb syndrome, because your brain remembers the leg being there and it sends a signal to say the leg is hurting. And then it's saying, you know, your leg hurting, but you don't have a leg. So, and yeah, and like biting your nails. So it's very interesting, our behavior patterns and how all of these things connect and how getting to the core of the matter. The matter is us. The matter is the body. But you want to get to the core. The core is what? The spirit. The spirit. The core is the spirit. The matter is the body. So you want to always get to the core. And you want to be the individual that functions from their core every day. You want to function from your true self every day. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you, like, one thing that has, you know, happened to people, to like to black people or people of African descent, one thing that has happened is, is that um, our true self, the story of our true self has been changed so much. It has really been changed so much through history that, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of work for us to get back to who we really are as a people of color. And we can do it. But the first thing that we've got to do, we've got to become spiritually free. When we become spiritually free, we become very powerful. And you are no longer, like I said earlier, you are no longer afraid of anybody anymore. So all the people that appear to have power, when you become a spiritually free person and you communicate and you talking to your spirit every day and you like, OK, now this is my question I have today. And I want you to tell me the answer to this. When you become that person, you're going to you're going to become unstoppable. Nobody's going to be able to stop any dream you have, anything that you have. They will not be able to stop. It. So uh, but y'all said we're going to do a part two. Right. That's going to be fun. We'll do a part two to this and we'll dig a little bit deeper. And in part two, I, it's going to be I want to share something really interesting with y'all. Like I said, it's going to be in my next book, uh, Destiny Driven. It's going to be in that book. But I will touch on the um, the five elements and how. Our body, I'm going to I'm going to show you how I, the, the organs in our body equate to the universe. And it's very it's quite fascinating. Very, very fascinating. So with that, I am going to sign off. I had so much fun tonight. Oh, it was just so much fun. And uh, I hope y'all join next time. And I will see you all later. Thank <laughs> you.